Hi everybody and welcome to this short tutorial on progressive web apps. First of all, I am Kevin Farruja. I am a software engineer and co-founder at Incredible Web. During this short tutorial, first I will introduce you to progressive web apps and what they stand for. And then we'll take a look at some code at a progressive web chat application we have built to show you the different components which are related to progressive web apps and how you may be able to copy and paste them yourself onto your own solution. But first of all, what are progressive web apps? The official definition goes that a progressive web app uses modern web capabilities to deliver an app-like user experience. They evolve from pages and browser tabs to immersive top-level apps, leveraging the web's low friction. In our words, we will describe progressive web apps as websites that look like mobile apps. And this is related to the ongoing debate about web versus mobile. So if anything that is done in a native app could also be done using the browser, is there still need for native applications? For those of you who have de developed native applications, um, you might know that it is quite tedious sometimes to maintain many different versions of the application, especially for small startups. So we're looking at different versions installed on different devices and they sometimes behave differently. And you may also need to have different versions of the API if your application is connected to the API and users have a different version than the latest one. Obviously on the web, as soon as you go and deploy your latest version, you know that everyone is using the latest version immediately. Apart from maintenance, native applications, you also lose out on some users due to the steps which are involved to get them to install your application. So if we're going to a website, once I'm on the website, I'm already using it. In the case of a native application, first I must find the application, download it, install it, open it, and eventually begin using application. And we have seen, even on some of our own websites, that some people download an application and surprisingly never open it. Also, if we get progressive web apps, we could get rid of these annoying pop-ups or bars where we're trying to push the user who's already on our website to go to our native application. So what is the definition of a progressive web app and what properties does it hold? So a progressive web app must obviously be progressive and by this we mean that it must obey the concept of progressive enhancement. So it works on all devices and the user experience is improved if the user's device or browser allows for this functionality. So if we're looking at a web app which uses push notifications, it must work on all devices and if the user's device and browser support push notifications, then we will serve them, but otherwise it should work anyway. Progressive web apps, since they are normal websites, they are also discoverable, for example, through Google and linkable. So we've got a progressive web app with multiple states. It is possible to bookmark a page or send a page to someone and once they open it, they are immediately in the correct state. So if we're looking at a chat application which has both inbox and sandbox, the URL would update between the inbox and the sandbox and by accessing that URL we're already immediately in the correct mailbox. A progressive web app must also be responsive, 
This is self-explanatory, so it must use responsive web design and look great on all devices. It must also look and feel like an app. And this one is interesting, it should be connectivity independent. So this means that it should work well even in areas of low connectivity or possibly even offline. We'll come to that shortly once we tackle service workers and I'll show you some examples as well in the code. A progressive web app must also be re-engageable. This is one of the key features from native applications. When a user installs a native application, he is more likely to return to your app and to use your app again. And progressive web apps try to take the best out of websites and the best out of native applications. And this is one of these features. So we're talking about, for example, push notifications, which get the user to open your app again. Progressive web apps are also installable. We'll come to this shortly, but basically you could add them to the home screen on your native app. They must be fresh, so the content is always updated. And finally, they must be safe, so they only work on HTTPS. This is very important because using service workers we're giving a lot of control and if there is a man in the middle attack we are able to serve the incorrect assets for example javascript and the user might not be aware that he is being um, snooped on for example or might download even malicious content so the technologies we're looking at for progressive web apps are mostly service workers, the manifesto JSON and push notifications. We'll take a look at some code examples. However, there is much more to that. There's geolocation, APIs, there's battery APIs, accelerometer APIs, and much more. And when using one of these APIs, it is important to check the cross-browser uh, compatibility because of course many of these are still in their early stages and might not be supported on all browsers. So what are service workers? Basically it is a bit of JavaScript which runs independently from the DOM, so independently from the document object model and what we could do through the service worker we can intercept every network request which is made. So once a service worker has started and we're trying to fetch an uh, asset, a JavaScript or a CSS file, we're able to serve it from the cache, for example. And this allows us to go offline, to make our app work offline. As you can see from the image below, it is supported mostly on Firefox and Chrome. It is also supported on Opera, not on Opera Mini, and works also on the Android browsers. If we take a quick look at the service worker lifecycle, so once I go to the page the first time, it will install the service worker for me, and during this phase, we are going to register all static assets. So we're talking about CSS and JavaScript. After installation, it is activated and it waits idle until there is either a fetch request, so I'm trying to fetch something over the network, or I send a message and I raise a message event. And the message event is used similar to a pub sub, so we're trying to communicate between the JavaScript on the service worker and the JavaScript which is available in the DOM. The manifest.json is just a JSON file which could be placed in the root directory of the website and it contains some simple information such as the name and the description of our progressive web app and a few icons which will be displayed when loading the splash screen which will be available once the user has installed your app. The manifest.json is also a prerequisite for push notifications using uh, Google Cloud Messaging because we need to include the sender ID 
as part of the manifesto JSON. After a user installs your progressive web app from the add to home screen, which we just saw, then he is able, we are able to, using media queries, to know whether the user has loaded the app through the home screen or through the website. And this allows us, for example, we would be able to display an install button if the user accesses it through the website. And once they access it through display mode standalone, we are able to do display none on that button and hide it as we know he has already installed it. We can obviously use this as well for other CSS. Push notifications are a fantastic feature on native apps. It works very well for retention. There's an interesting study by Localytics. It's worth looking into. But retention is said to have doubled for push-enabled apps compared to non-push. And push notifications can be sent in the example on the left. We are using a technology called Go Roost, and this one takes this technology takes care of both sending the notification to the user as well as maintaining a sort of notification hub where we are keeping record of who should receive and who has registered for push notifications. So push notifications have two aspects to it. The part where you send the notification and the part where you store who should be receiving the messages. So in the example of a chat application, and I'm in a chat with another two people, however 100 people have registered for push notifications, when I send a message and there are two other people, those two people should receive push notification, but the remaining 98 users should obviously not, since they didn't receive the message. In the example we'll be showing you, we have a chat which is similar to IRC, so everyone is in like a chat room, so everyone is in the same chat room, and anyone who receives, who joins a chat room will receive a push notification. This is obviously could be improved to make it you create different um, chat rooms instead of just one and only, for example, at private messaging. There are many ways to, to take this forward, but for simplicity's sake, we decided to make it just one chat room. Finally, to have a good progressive web app, stick to good design guidelines. You've got material design as an excellent example. This includes small um, tips. For example, on a mobile app, the top navigation is always visible and it doesn't hide when you scroll. And also pay import a lot of importance to performance. So we're looking at jank-free websites. When scrolling, it doesn't get stuck. No paint storms, no layout trashing. There are many good resources online, and through Chrome Developer Tools, you're able to check how your website is performing. Now let's take a look at an example. It's available on GitHub. You've got the link in the comment section below. So let's get started. 